Die openbare beleggingscorporatie, oftewel PIC, is bijna 2000 miljard rand sterk. Staatsambtenaars en pensioene word ook dier die corporatie bestuur. Kom er laai achter op oor hoe hier die openbare geld belewe word. Stuart Theobald, hoof van Intelidex en gereelde bijdraar van Business Day, gesels nou met my hier oor via Skype vanuit London. Stuart, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, well done. Good to be with you. How carefully has government pensioners' money been managed through the PIC? Well, on the whole, uh, it is probably reasonably well managed. The PIC is so big and its portfolio of assets that is managed is, is so large that uh, it really accounts for the lion's share of all financial assets in South Africa. It's the biggest single investor by a long way. And when you're that large, you're effectively invested across the economy uh, you're in every single asset that's available, just about. So uh, a few bad, a, result, a few bad decisions, a, a, a few bad decisions, Stuart, would not imperil the safety of pensioners' money. So I think what's important to understand is that uh, civil servant pensioners are, are on a defined benefit scheme. So the benefits they receive are defined up front and. The PIC manages assets in order to meet that liability. So the liability doesn't change depending on the performance of the assets, but what does change is the ability of those assets to fund that future liability. So the taxpayer effectively underwrites the public service pension scheme. So in the event that the PIC's assets are insufficient to move to meet the liabilities to retired civil servants, it means that the government and the taxpayer will have to step in to make good those liabilities. So any underperformance by the PIC is effectively a risk to the taxpayer and any money that the PIC loses is effectively a loss of taxpayer, uh, taxpayer money that would otherwise not necessarily have to be contributed towards funding those civil servant pensioners. Right, so in your column in Business Day last week, you raised alarm and said something is wrong at the PIC, citing three investment decisions since 2013, which were, uh, well, you know, uh, questionable. Uh, independent media, VBS Bank, and an obscure Nigerian energy firm. How worried should pensioners be about those three cases? So pensioners, have a minor worry because the increases in their benefits are to some extent a function of the performance of the PIC's portfolios. So as far as on the margin, the increases that they're likely to get in their pensions, they have to worry about those. And underperformance is certainly a risk to them in that respect. But the real worry, Voldemort, is to taxpayers because it, it's taxpayers that have to make good any shortfall in the PIC's portfolios any shortfall in its ability to meet obligations to pensioners. So it's really all of us who pay tax in South Africa who have to worry when money is being lost by the PIC because of deals it's doing that it really should not be doing. So you mentioned those three, those three deals. And just between the, the three of those, there's probably close to 10 billion rand of money that has been lost through poor investment decision making and poor investment management post decision making. And to, to those three, we've also seen a lot of press recently about AIR Technologies, which is a firm linked to Iqbal survey of the independent group that listed in December last year. And then the attempted uh, listing that was, that was attempted last month of Cybermath Technologies, another firm, very similar kind of structure, which would have seen substantially more money coming out of the PIC that was abandoned. Uh, but the earlier uh, uh, structure, IO technology, that has been listed and there are serious problems with that one too. Stuart, do you think that the PIC can successfully withstand possible political pressure to invest in vehicle A or company B because of friends of government ministers who might benefit, citing perhaps independent as an example? So it can do it if we have the right institutional parameters and the right institutional strength. And I think that's the question we need to ask about the PIC. We need to ask exactly what decision process is being followed when these investments are considered and when decisions are made over whether to invest or not. We need to understand that properly because at the moment it doesn't look like 
proper due diligence is done on some of these investments and proper investment decision-making processes are followed. So we need to understand just how exactly the PIC is going through that process. And then we need to ensure that it's world-class. You know, the PIC is among the biggest pension fund managers in the world. Not only is it a very large, uh, in the South African context, it's big by world standards. And there is, around the world, a very well-developed system and understanding of what kinds of institutions should be at work in managing this kind of money and this kind of portfolio of assets. And we need to study those and we need to make sure that the PIC lives up to world-class standards of investment decision-making and management. That can be done, Voldemort. It can be done if the right political will is put in place and the right steps are taken to review the way the PIC works and to implement the right systems and processes there. Stuart, we've run out of time just briefly. Parliament recently asked for more transparency in the PIC's decision-making, especially when it comes to investment in unlisted firms. Why was there pushback from Treasury, even though Treasury now is under new management? It's, uh, I, it's difficult to understand exactly why. There could be some reasonable concerns that certain kinds of transparency could damage the ability of the PIC to manage its portfolio. So there are some circumstances you can imagine where you don't want it to be publicly known that the PIC is, is exposed to particular counters because it might be competitively sensitive. I don't think that those, uh, those issues are really uh, important compared to the overwhelming importance of ensuring there is good transparency. And if we want a world-class public sector fund manager, it should apply world-class standards of transparency. Stuart Theobald from Intellidex from London, thank you so much. Blij en geskakel die program gaan net hier naar voort.